On the 4th of October, we celebrate the anniversary of death of Joseph Engling. If you want to find a little bit more about him, you can read it in the latest newsletter, which you'll find on our um, website, schoenstatt.org.au. Today, I'd like to share with you some thoughts about how Father viewed Joseph Engling and things he had to say about him. You can see here his photo. He was truly a son of Father Kentenich, a son of the Father, and you will hear what Father Kentenich has to say about him. So in 1968, and it would have been before Father died, um, Father is referring to the 50th anniversary of death of Joseph Engling. He died on the 4th of October, 1918. But in actual fact, Father did not live for that 50th anniversary. However, he said, Every branch of the Schoenstatt family has been preparing in the last months for the 50th anniversary of the death of our saintly Joseph Engling, whose process of beatification was introduced in 1952. Joseph Engling's heroic covenant of love with the Mother Thrice Admirable gave expression to and was a means and safeguard for his covenant of love with Christ and the Triune God and with all those around him. Countless members of the family have physically walked the path of his final hours on earth. In actual fact, our pilgrimage in 2000, and, uh, 2000, the year 2000, we did that as well. We walked that path in Cambrai in France. And this journey inspires, Father said, inspiring those who, who walked the path to relive and repeat what Joseph Engling exteriorly suffered and interiorly experienced at the different places. In this way, they have again become aware of the fundamental forces that constitute our family spirit. Not least of these is the truth found in the words of Post Pope Pius X's Marian encyclical, and I quote from this encyclical as Father did. For can anyone fail to see that there is no surer and more direct road than through Mary, for uniting all mankind in Christ and obtaining through him the perfect adoption of sons that we may be holy and immaculate in the sight of God. The end of the quote. Father goes on, when St. Louis Grignon de Montfort says of Mary's apostles in the final days, applies to the life of Joseph Engling. He is one of, as quote from Grignon de Montfort, great men who are to come, fashioned by Mary at the command of the Most High to extend his empire over the ungodly, the idolaters and the infidels. End of quote. And another quote from de Montfort. They are men who like a burning fire enkindle everywhere the fires of divine love. They will be true disciples of Jesus Christ, walking in the steps of his poverty, his humility, his contempt of the world and his charity, teaching the straight way of God in pure truth, according to the Holy Gospel and not according to the maxims of the world, unconcerned by the views of others, without favouring anyone, without sparing, heeding or fearing any mortal, no matter how powerful. That's the end of the quote of de Montfort. Father continues, the degree to which our young hero, Joseph Engling, knew his education was in Mary's hands and how much he expected from her is shown by a confession he made verbally and in writing after reading the life of Gabriel of the Sorrowful Mother. This life urged him on to compare himself with this saint. At the end, Joseph Engling had to admit in every way that Gabriel gave evidence of practicing heroic virtue, he had to recognize his weakness, misery and half-heartedness. And yet, he believed that he would become a greater saint than Gabriel. He gave as his reason that Our Lady, his educator, could not deny him this wish. This is how deeply he lived in the Marian atmosphere which made it easy for him to attain an extraordinary closeness to Christ and love for the Heavenly Father. I'd like to quote 
now from um, a letter that Father Kentenich wrote to Monsignor Joseph Schmitz in May of 1952, which was the year when the process for Joseph Engling's beatification began. Father wrote, The founding document literally ends with the invitation and call to seal a covenant in this holy place. The extent of the fruitfulness which has followed the acceptance of this invitation can be seen throughout the history of our family, especially in the life and work of outstanding individuals with perhaps none greater than our Joseph Engling. If we would turn to an informed and critical Engling scholar and ask what the secret of Engling's life was, he would have to say it was the covenant of love and the grace-filled place where it was made. And then in this letter, Father Kentenich then inserted some practical insights about the new free personality which Father believed he was called to help form. And he drew on experiences of Joseph Engling. I just share a couple of these. Quote, because it fits here and is so typical of what Joseph Engling and the boys did back then, we want to briefly recall a certain anecdote. The boys wanted to learn to say their own personal morning and evening prayers, even though they had community morning prayer. And they wanted to do this because they said to themselves that what is done together doesn't count for much. After all, when the community is no longer there, what will happen to the prayer? And because the war had already broken out, we had to expect that all the Sodalists would eventually be drafted into the army. And then they would no longer be surrounded by a religious atmosphere which would carry and motivate them. Hence the education now. I will do it personally, regardless of what others think. Now, Joseph Engling was a boy who was extremely receptive and open. He gladly took up each inspiration and carried it out. And that's what happened in this case too. He took the impulse and put it into action. Now you must picture for yourselves the situation at the time. The boys didn't have any beds because they had all been requisitioned by the military. They all slept together in a big dormitory room on sacks of straw. That's something we can't imagine here, sacks of straw. Or does someone, Father said here, know what a sack of straw is like? And Joseph Engling was relatively big. So all the boys would jump under their covers. Joseph, the big fellow, kneeled in front of his straw sack and prayed in private, with everyone looking at him. Just imagine boys at that age. Of course, the whole menagerie cut loose and gave him a hard time. Then both groups came to the spiritual director. Father's talking about himself, so he uses spiritual director rather than Father Kentonick. And what did Father advise them? The boys should just go ahead and tease. That was only proper. And what did he tell Joseph Engling? If you want to be a man of character, you have to accomplish what you have set out to do. You can see how essential it has always been to Schoenstatt to educate persons who want something from within and then swim against the extreme. It did not last long until the whole company imitated Joseph Engling. So Joseph had won in the end. And another story. And how did it go later when Joseph Engling was in the army? He did the same way in his barracks. Even when all the recruits in the barrack room, even with all the recruits in the barrack room, he knelt down and said his night prayers. You can imagine how that went over. Soldiers are soldiers the world over. They tripped over his feet on purpose, so on. He was a big and strong man and he had passion. He put up with it for a while, but then his wrath began to show. If something must be done, it will be done right. He took a stool and pounded on the floor. And then they began to show him respect. Father says then, why am I telling you all this in such detail? In order to explain what it means to become a firm character, to become a free priestly 
free, a free personality, free from inner fear and compulsion. Even when the concern of our boys in Schoenstatt was, for instance, obedience, the spiritual director always emphasised that we do not want to obey out of weakness, but out of inner strength. These couple of stories about Joseph Engling should give us an incentive now to perhaps follow in his example. We want to learn to become firm, free, priestly Christian personalities. Why not ask Joseph Engling on his day of death, 4th of October, to pray with us and for us in heaven that we can become that person that God has called us and wants to form us to be. And we all can also pray for his beatification. I wish you many blessings for the day and for the month of October, the month of Our Lady's Rosary. God bless.